Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 niche fragrance brands and I'm just going to say which five I really love and which five I'm really not so sure about. And really this video has come out of me sampling a lot of fragrances over the last couple of years and I've just come to the realisation that I have these opinions forming about these brands and I just wondered whether anybody else shares these opinions or whether you have the opposite opinions because we're all very different people we all like different fragrances and I think that's really one of the most fascinating aspects of trying fragrances and talking about it as a community so I thought I'd just share so if you haven't seen me before I'm Claire Smith and I make videos all about perfume perfume science perfume history perfume psychology and I also just do some straight perfume reviews so if that kind of thing interests you then please do consider subscribing and also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So this video is going to be a little bit chatty because I'm just going to talk about you know what I've tried, my feelings on these brands and I'm just sort of saying this because I've realised that knowing this information can be useful when you're sampling because you can direct your efforts, you can direct where you'll spend your money on trying new things because trying fragrances from brands that you know that you like other fragrances from it's probably going to get you better results than trying fragrances with brands that you know that you've previously not liked so i'm going to start off with a positive i'm going to start off with amouage so amouage is a brand that i was really really hesitant to try at first because i'd watched loads of videos of people blind buying amouage and unwrapping them and trying them for the first time and just you can see on their faces you just they just don't like them and I just always thought that maybe they weren't that friendly maybe there was something that I would really struggle with I'd heard they were challenging and I just thought you know this probably isn't a brand for me but actually I was sent some samples by John Scented Snowdrops here on YouTube and also by Lizzie Rose and Jones here on YouTube and I just really really liked them and I really wasn't expecting to and it really shocked me so I get it with Amouage, they are challenging, but I think Amouage are a brand that are changing and are becoming a little bit less out there than they previously were. So I think, you know, maybe their newer collections might be easier for people to try. I think the first fragrance that I tried from Amouage was Portrayal, and I really wasn't expecting to like that one. I was expecting it to be really, really harsh and really white floral, really andolic. And I was also expecting it to be really, really dirty. And actually, it wasn't really, really dirty. It was quite a gentle one. And I just really, really liked it. And I think that, you know, when I tried my second one, which was Opus 3, I really liked that too. And that's kind of like a, a bookish, almost powdery violet fragrance, violet and mimosa in the main. And yeah, it just smells like books in an old library or something like that. It's just got this sort of really nice sweetness to it as well. One of the more recent ones that I've tried was Lilac Love. And Lilac Love, I can see why it would divide opinion, but I can also see why people would really, really love it. The first time I tried it, I sprayed way too much and you do not spray too much of Lilac Love. It's just overwhelming. It's so strong, that fragrance. And Lilac Love is really, yeah, all about the lilac. It's really a very heady kind of lilac, almost an indolic feeling lilac, but with a powdery, almost white chocolate feel something like like a grated white chocolate almost very much very much a powdery kind of fragrance on second trying I was I was hooked and I think that's just really something in fragrance that is it's when you're curious enough to try something twice it's when it's not just something that you've smelt before when it's something really different that's what makes you go back and try something again I've tried a few other fragrances from them I've tried imitation I've also tried journey and I think those fragrances, they don't they don't grab me as much as those other three. But I am just really curious to try other fragrances from Amouage because they've just been so different. And I'm I'm really fascinated to try things like Guidance, for example. I know Amouage are ridiculously expensive and but I just have really enjoyed trying them. And I would really recommend if you do get the chance to try Amouage, just go for it. So the second house I'm going to talk about is one that I'm really not fond of and that's Shea and Blue. So you may remember if you watch my channel regularly that I bought a load of fragrances from Shea and Blue back in November and I think I ended up reviewing them maybe in February or March of the next year and that's because I was so so disappointed that it took me that long to get around to making the video because I just didn't want to be completely negative about that brand. I wanted to try and find some positive, something positive to say about those fragrances and honestly I really really struggled because they had just disappointed me quite so much. 
So the thing that really shocked me about Shea and Blue was the fact that I think I've tried most of those fragrances in store only a couple of years before I bought them. And I thought I liked them. I didn't remember the details about them, but I really thought that I thought they were nice fragrances. Either my taste had dramatically changed or they'd been reformulated. I know they changed the bottles that they were putting the fragrances in, but I can't imagine that they'd reformulated eight different fragrances that I'd bought. But yeah, I know loads of people love those fragrances. I know that I see, see reviews of those, they're positive reviews. I've seen people that I, I watch regularly talk about those fragrances and really like some of those fragrances. They just weren't for me. There was something about most of them. And I think really the thing that I would smell would be Ambroxan or it would be some kind of synthetic woods in those fragrances. And it would just be a complete turn off for me. The longevity was lacking and they just they just weren't nice to me. They just weren't things that I wanted to wear. And I ended up decluttering eight of those fragrances. Ironically, I did keep one. And that was one of the fragrances that was in the older style bottle, which is what leads me to suspect they may have been reformulated. Because it just seems a bit suspicious that I would like the older style bottle fragrance, but not any of the newer style bottle fragrances. So the third brand is one that I really like, and that is Frederick Mal. So Frederick Mal, I've tried in store, and I also have a sample of one of them. But I've tried maybe six or seven of their fragrances, and the two that really stand out to me are Carnal Flower and Musk Ravageur. So Musk Ravageur is a warm, spiced, kind of nuzzly musk to me. It's something that's very sort of intimate and... Yeah, just it's got a little bit of a sexiness about it. And there's also carnal flower. So carnal flower is a very kind of almost tropical feeling, slightly fruity, but mainly indolic tuberose fragrance. Just really beautiful fragrance. Really like that one. And I think, you know, I've tried lipstick rose. That one's also very nice. I've tried portrait of a lady. Very nice, but very loud. And I've also tried the iris one, the moon and the night. The moon and the night are ridiculously expensive. So I'm really pleased that I don't love those. The thing that's really st struck me about Frederick Mull is just their presentation. Just how they're just not bothered about how their fragrances look. They all look very tidy. They all look very uniform. But they're not brightly coloured. They're not singing or dancing kind of bottles. They look almost like clone brand bottles. And I think that really just says a lot about their fragrances. It says that their fragrances speak for themselves. They don't need to dress them up. They don't need to make them look sexy on a shelf. They don't need to attract people to go try them because it's just the word of mouth. It's people talking about them that makes people interested enough to go and try those fragrances in stores. So yeah, Frederick Mal are, are just eye-wateringly expensive in some cases. And I really don't think that I'm going to be rushing out and buying a bottle of one of their fragrances anytime soon. But I can see me buying a small amount of their fragrances in the future. I just think they're really, really good. And I've really enjoyed trying them in store. I don't need to own everything in life. I don't need to lust after everything. But, you know, just having those fragrances that you really appreciate and you you can see the artistry in them just makes you realise that, you know, it's worth sampling, really, isn't it? So, yeah, I'd really recommend going to try some Frederick Mal fragrances. If you see them in store, just pick one up. It may look like a very boring bottle, but you might find a love. So the next brand is one that I'm not so keen on, and that's Molecule. So I remember when I first joined YouTube, when I first started watching YouTube videos, people were doing these videos where they were comparing homemade ISOE Super fragrances with Molecule 01. And that just made me so curious about that brand. I'd never heard about this fragrance before. I wanted to know everything there was to know about ISOE Super. I wanted to smell it. And I just really wanted to try Molecule 01. So I eventually went into store and sprayed it. And my shock at, at how this smelled, it just smelled of alcohol. It literally smelled of perfume as alcohol for a few seconds and then it was gone. And I just didn't smell anything else. And that is because I think some people can smell Isoe Super and other people can't. And I'm probably one of those people who can't, but... I think I've smelt it in other fragrances, so I'm not sure whether I'm actually smelling something different in those other fragrances. It's really kind of quite fascinating in a way. But it just made me think, you know, why would I ever choose that fragrance? Because I can't smell it, but I guess other people can maybe smell it. But that's the joy for me. I want to be able to smell the fragrances, so that's just something that doesn't appeal to me. I've since tried Molecule 02. Again, the same thing happened. I could smell the perfume as alcohol for a few seconds and it was gone. I also tried, I think, Molecule 04, which is the one that is like Javanol. That one, just it was just woody. There was, there's nothing more to it. I just don't really 
get with the with the concept of that brand. It's not how I want to smell. I do think it's an interesting concept, but it's just not something that's for me. Maybe I should try the fragrances that are blended with other notes. Maybe that I would get on better. If you have any suggestions about the Molecule brand, please let me know down below. But yeah, there's, they just haven't really been something that's excited me so far. So the next brand that I really, really like are Theodorus Calatinis. And I've tried these thanks to Paola Bianca. So Paola Bianca, I think, was probably one of the first people on YouTube to start talking about Theodorus Calatinis. And I think the brand recognised that and sent her a lot of fragrances. Uh, but she also bought a lot of fragrances. She clearly loved that brand very, very much. And one of the duplicates of the the gifted fragrances she very kindly sent to me and I'm forever grateful for that because I absolutely love it the one she sent me was a luring fig and that literally smells like a whole fig tree with a load of vanilla it's an absolutely gorgeous fragrance and really I think it's just one of the most photorealistic fig fragrances I've ever smelt I think really that's what I appreciate about the whole brand whatever it says on the description of the fragrance is what you smell if you smell coffee addict you smell coffee it's a very coffee fragrance. And I really like that literality that runs through all the fragrances. I love Tobacco Maniac as well, which is a really honey tobacco fragrance, really sweet and sticky. I really love the Iris Leather one as well. Very, very just straight up Iris Leather. It's just an absolutely stunning brand and they have some gorgeous fragrances. And I just really want to try all of them. I really want to try the Lemon Tart one as well. I've noticed they have a UK distributor now, which is really intriguing me. And as soon as they get some kind of sample kit in there, I'm going to be all over that. But yeah, I just want to try more of them to be sure of which one that I'm going to get because that brand is just so beautiful. And it's really reasonably priced as well, actually, for their main line of fragrances. It's really not an expensive brand and it's just such a, a really well-made brand for the price that it is. So that's Theodorus Calatinis. So the next brand that I've tried that really wasn't a love was Juliet Has A Gun. So the, I remember being so excited to try this brand and finally seeing them in a shop and just being sort of amazed and really wanting to, to try all of them all at once. But obviously you can't try all of them at once because you don't smell anything. So the first one I tried because I absolutely love Pear was Pear Ink. And I was expecting to smell this, you know, bright, juicy really beautiful green pear fragrance, really uplifting, really sparkly. What did I smell? I smelled something that I thought actually just reminded me of hairspray. It was just so disappointing. And I think that disappointment really stayed with me with my other experiences with that brand. So not, not perturbed by that. I thought, you know, let's be fair about this. Let's try a few more. So I tried not a perfume because I thought, do you know what? I love Glossier U. Not a perfume has been... been compared with Glossier U, maybe I'm going to love not a perfume. I sprayed it. I smelt something. It was gone within maybe a minute or so. It was literally just the alcohol, a bit much like my experience with Molecule 01. So I just think I can't smell that fragrance. Also, another one that I tried was Lipstick Fever. I expected to love that. I love those kind of powdery, makeup -y kind of fragrances. It just wasn't for me. I tried Lady Vengeance. That one just, yeah, it, it was okay. It didn't, didn't wow me. I also tried Moscow, Moscow Mule. That one didn't grab me either. So if anybody has any suggestions of a fragrance from Juliet Has A Gun that I should really try, that I might love, please let me know down below because I've tried quite a few now and just nothing has grabbed me. And it just makes me think that that house is perhaps not for me. So my next love is Diptyque and Diptyque are a brand that I just did not understand. When I first started sampling them in store, I remember looking at the bottles and thinking, why are there dark ones and why are there clear ones? And I've since realised it's because the clear ones are the EDTs and the dark ones are the EDPs. So if, you, if you've got an equally kind of perplexed feeling about Diptyque, that's the difference. Just thought I'd sort that one out for you. So Diptyque are a brand that I've been trying mainly because I've got a voucher that's valid for this store and Diptyque are sold in this store. And I really want to treat myself to a really nice fragrance and I'm trying to decide which one to buy. And really it's between Carnal Flower, a little tiny travel size of Count Carnal Flower and a Diptyque fragrance. And I've been trying loads of different Diptyque fragrances and I've realized that I've got fragrances that overlap with a few of them. So I've tried 
Odwell, and that one is just quite close to Metal Wave. It's not the same by any means, but it's, it's close enough for me not to want it, even though it is very nice. Another fragrance that kind of overlaps a little bit is L'Ombre Don Lou, and that one overlaps with Miller Harris Found at Dusk, which is a fragrance I absolutely love. And so I just don't want to buy that one either. But really the ones that I've been trying repeatedly have been Eau Capital, also um, Fleur de Peau, and Orpheon. And I think out of those three, it's really Orpheon is the one that I really like the best and the one that I continuously try. And the thing I like about Orpheon is the fact that I smell something different every time with it. So sometimes I think it smells a bit vintage, sometimes I think it smells powdery, sometimes I think it smells really rosy, other times I think it smells quite modern, sometimes I smell the aldehydes in it. I just get different things every time I smell it and sometimes it's really strong, sometimes it's not quite so strong and I just can't really work it out and I think that's what's fascinating me about that fragrance and what's making me keep going to try it because I really want to be sure before I, I buy something that expensive, I don't want to buy it and regret it. And so, yeah, I want to spend those vouchers wisely. So I'm, I'm just sort of trying to decide between that fragrance and also Carnal Flower. So, yeah, that's the feeling I have about Diptyque. And I just think that all their fragrances are all quite strong in the main and they're just really long lasting. And I think if you're going to spend that amount of money on fragrance, you generally want that. You generally want something that other people are going to smell. You want something that's wow. You want something that you're going to be really happy to be wearing. And, and Diptyque sort of give me that feeling. But they're also quite every day. And I think that's really what I want. I don't want an out, a standout kind of occasion fragrance that I wear very, very sort of, you know, once in a blue moon. I want something I can enjoy every day. And I think Orpheon is perhaps something like that. So, yeah, Diptyque are just a brand that I have tried and I've really enjoyed. And it's really surprised me because I feel like Diptyque are a brand that not everybody loves. But I don't hear many people talking about them. So maybe they're, they're you know, they are quite an established brand. They're quite an old brand. So maybe I'm, I'm doing them an injustice, but I just don't hear that many people talking about them really in general. So that's Diptyque. So the next brand that I'm really not sure about are Mansera. So I think the thing with Mansera is that I've tried really quite a lot of Mansera fragrances. I've, I've actually made two whole videos about trying different Mansera fragrances. But having tried those fragrances in those videos and also a few more since, none of them have really stood out as something that I've really am interested in or I've wanted to buy a lot of. I did like Black to Black, but again, that fragrance is not something I want to wear regularly. It's something that's really, really strong. It's something that literally smells black. And it's something that's a very, very strong, leathery, rose, oody kind of fragrance, but literally a very black smelling fragrance. It's not an everyday fragrance. It's not something you'd... It's almost a little bit depressing, that fragrance in a way, but it's just very intriguing. I think the other one that really stood out to me was, was Choco Violet. And Choco Violet is like the smelling a very sweet violet candy, but with a bowl of Cocoa Pops sort of sat in the corner, um, you know, that's been left almost. It's something that's sort of quite powdery, quite cocoa-y, but also that, that violet smell. And again, that's something that's very intriguing, but I just don't really want to smell like that on a regular basis. It's something that I just want to sniff out of a bottle. I don't want to wear it. I think the thing with Mansera as well with the names is that they're really named very randomly and that can really make it very confusing sampling them. So I tried uh, Velvet Vanilla and that really wasn't a vanilla fragrance to me. That was more of a tuberose fragrance and that really shocked me. But I guess that's Mansera, isn't it? That's how they name their fragrances. It's a bit like Montal, which is a related brand. I think really Mansera and Montal have a very particular DNA. Maybe that's just something that is not agreeing with me that I'm not getting into but I would be really interested to know if you do love those brands which ones do you think that I should try that maybe don't have that DNA quite as strongly or maybe just are a very friendly kind of fragrance I have tried I think it's Honey Oud from Montal and I did like it but again it's not something that I really want to buy I do have a bottle of Intense Cafe that was gifted to me by Gabby the fragrantician but again that's a fragrance that I would never have bought a bottle of myself and yeah, so getting back to the Mansera rather than Montal, but really Montal could be grouped in with this. I just want to know which ones to try because I can't believe that I dislike an entire brand or just don't get on with an entire brand. So yeah, please let me know down below which ones you think I might be interested in. 
The next brand is again one that I've tried and I've really enjoyed and this brand is really a little bit offbeat and it's something that's a really good example on YouTube of the community here and just the way you can try things you would never even think to try because of other people and this brand really the whole reason I've tried it is because Scented Snowdrops, Jon Snow really absolutely loves this brand and this brand is a New Zealand brand it's called One Way Bridge and it's something that I don't think has a UK distributor. So it's something that is really a struggle to sample unless you're willing to take a big chance. So this fragrance brand have a lot of different fragrances and I, I, I can't say I've tried a lot of them. I've tried maybe three or four of them. But each one, even though they've perhaps not been exactly what I want, they've just been so beautiful and so well made. And something that's really intrigued me. And I think that's really what you want from a fragrance brand, isn't it? Something that provokes a reaction. The two that I've really enjoyed and the two that I can really see me wearing are Date With A Dame, which is a, an Anisi kind of tuberose fragrance, which has this kind of really beautiful kind of dark musk in the base. But there's also a more recent one called Pitching Woo. And that fragrance smells like an apricot ice cream to me, but with like a fizzy, a fizzy drink over the ice cream almost but it's not necessarily fizzy it's more just the the coolness that you get the the feeling of the ice cream melting almost the creaminess of the ice cream melting into this kind of fizzy drink they're just really nice fragrances even the one that i've tried that i i i personally wouldn't want to wear but i have really enjoyed smelling on other people is top shelf top shelf is a fragrance that smells like a very hairy man after he's been doing some work and is sat in a pub you know, that, that's not a fragrance that sounds attractive, is it? But it was just so beautiful when I smelt it and so just intriguing. And I just really wanted to smell it again and again and again. And Elise, I think the, the, the brand owner said this, this fragrance smelt of her dream man. And I can see it. I can see that, you know, if you really like, you know, hardworking men who work physically with their hands and stuff, that fragrance really evokes that feeling of, of a hardworking man, I guess. But yeah, this, this brand is just, it just feels a little bit magical. There's something about it that just grabs me. And I, I've just really enjoyed smelling those fragrances. So yeah, I would recommend if you do get the chance to try One Way Bridge, perhaps you live in New Zealand, maybe, then please do could go check them out because they, they're really nice from what I've tried. I think that, you know, One Way Bridge are something that, that just needs more, more hype and more exposure. So yeah, One Way Bridge are something that I've just really enjoyed trying through through knowing Scented Snowdrops here on YouTube. And my final brand that I don't really get on with is going to be Latafa. So Latafa are a fragrance brand that I've actually decluttered two from now. And I've tried quite a few Latafa fragrances now as well. And I've got one still left in my collection, but really my love for it kind of it waxes and wanes really. It's something that I have to be really in the mood for. I'm not saying they're all bad. I'm just saying that they have things about them that I don't particularly enjoy. So the ones that I've tried, the two that I've actually decluttered are Shake Al Shook Luxe Edition, which to me just was way too sweet. It had a plasticky saffron. It was really loud. The dry down was fine, but it just took a long time to get there. And it wasn't that interesting in the dry down. Opulent Musk is really the one that I found very um, off-putting. So Opulent Musk is a bit like a Baccarat Rouge kind of style fragrance, but it's more of a, like a lemony version of Baccarat Rouge. And it's definitely not as sweet as Baccarat Rouge. That one just had something very medicinal about it. And it was just kind of quite like a, a cleaning product almost. It smelled like an upholstery cleaning product at points in that fragrance. And it just wasn't something that I loved. So I ended up decluttering that. I think, the, you know, the rest of the brand, I've tried the Badi Al Oud, the Oud for, Oud for Greatness kind of dupes, the Initio dupes. I've tried the Amethyst one of that as well, and I didn't really like those. But I don't think I actually like the original Initio fragrances there either, so I kind of let Latafra off for that one. I've also tried an Abiad Rouge, which is the Baccarat Rouge dupe. I don't mind that one, it's okay, but it, it's not something that grabs me. And I've just been very wary to try others from this brand just because of my experiences with it. Camera was something that was all over YouTube and I've seen people already declutter that one. So I, I just think that that might have that DNA in it that I just don't like that's, that's very particular to Latafa fragrances. Yara is also one that I've been intrigued by, but I've just been very wary of because I'm just not sure that I will like it. I just feel very hesitant to spend even small amounts of money on fragrances that I haven't tried 
that I'm really not sure about the brand with. And Latafra is just a really good example of this. I think really, you know, if you do have a suggestion of a Latafra fragrance that you think that I might really enjoy, please do let me know because I really would like to try another one from this brand and try and redeem how I feel about it because I don't want to feel negatively about an entire brand if that's unfounded. But I think you need to judge the Tafra fragrances based on how much they cost. They don't cost a lot of money. But also, you know, I don't want cheap fragrances that don't smell good. There's just no point. So the Tafra are also on my list of ones to be wary of. So that's the final brand in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button. And please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know what you think of these brands in this video and which fragrances from the brands I'm not too sure about that you would suggest that I try that might change my mind about those brands. Please let me know down below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.